Hey you guys and welcome to another video. So today po is we will be discussing po kung ano po yung pwede nyo i-expect sa mga subjects natin for second sem. So if you're interested then please keep on watching. By the way, I'm Jeremiah and I upload law school and law student related vlogs. If you are new to this channel, please don't forget to click subscribe and click the notification bell sa tabi na subscribe or you can just simply click the click here na circle dyan sa my corner. So let's get to the video. Hey guys, and yes po, welcome again to another video. So, another week po, and yes, another content. So today po, I'm going to discuss to you po yung mga pwede natin expect sa mga subjects for second sem. Yes, second sem na po. Sa mga first time po dito sa video ko po, just want to inform you that I'm a first year law student, and yes, nasa second sem na po kami. And of course, second sem means new set of subjects and new set of everything. So, new set of topics. So, we'll be discussing po kung ano pa mga topics na pwede nyo pong expect sa mga subjects na ito for second sem. By the way, for second sem po, I have 6 mga subjects. I have civil law 2. Book po namin ngayon is obligations and contracts. Then I have criminal law 2. Tapos, I have constitutional law 2 and ADR or alternative dispute resolution. I have legal techniques and logic. And of course, I have basic legal ethics 1. So, those are my subjects for this sem, second sem. So, ano bang pwede natin expect sa mga subject na ito? So, let's start. So let's talk about criminal law 2. Book 2 sa criminal law. Okay. So guys, for criminal law for this sem po is it's just a continuation po for criminal law 1 sa first sem. If you remember po, and by the way, I'm going to link the previous video for na topic po, my previous video about what to expect for subjects. I'm gonna link that one below. So those were my subjects from first sem. So this sem po for criminal law 2 is para sa akin na mas specific siya compared sa criminal law 1. Bakit? Guys, if, if you've seen my video video, previous video, you realize na yung sa criminal law 1 po is mas general sa yung topic compared sa, sa criminal law 2. What do I mean by general topic? If you remember sa criminal law 1, wala sa masyadong dinidiscuss na mga specific na mga crimes. So yung dinidiscuss niya is yung general na penalties, durations, degrees for penalties for crimes, tapos ganun. Tapos yung mga mitigating, ano ba yung mga situations para mag-qualify yung accused or yung suspect for mas mataas na penalty or kung kailan ba pwedeng mabawasan yung penalty niya or period ng penalty niya. So, ganun guys, mas broad yung topic sa criminal law 1 compared sa criminal law 2 or sa book 2. Kasi po, ngayon sa criminal law 2 namin, so, mas specific yung mga crimes na nidiscuss dito. For example, just last week or like for the past meetings namin na discuss namin yung difference ng treason, ng sedition, ng rebellion. So, guys, talagang every crime po is iniisa-isa ngayon sa book 2 which I think is mas interesting compared sa book 1. Sa book 2 din, you may expect na mas alam niya po kung kailan sasabihin na, uy, yung crime na yan is for example, sa book 2 po ng criminal law for example ha, malaman niyo po kung, kung ano po ang distinction between murder, homicide, parricide, infanticide. So parang ganun po. Kasi di ba, di ba dati, pag naka, nanonood tayo ng news sa TV, pag may patayan, sasabihin lang natin agad na uy, may murder. Parang ganun. Without even knowing na yung patay na yun pala is not really murder. O lahat ng patayan is hindi hindi considered murder because there are elements for it to be called murder. For example, kailangan may treachery o di kaya planado lahat yung nagawang patayan. So, that could be considered a murder. Pero pag may, for example, may napatay pero hindi niya planado, parang ganun guys. So, pwede siyang mahulog sa homicide. Tapos, pag pinatay mo naman uh, member ng family o di kaya yung parents or yung asawa or pwede siyang sabihing parricide. So, see guys, sa criminal law 2 is mas specific siya talaga. So, you will learn a lot about sa mga crimes dito sa Philippines. Pwede mo na sabihin na, ah, yan, pag nanonood ka ng TV, pwede mo lang sabihin na, ah, yan, ano yan, murder, kasi may ganito. O di kaya sabihin mo, ah, that's homicide, kasi hindi naman planado, tapos nakuha lang siya ng ganito para mapatay yung, yung victim. Parang ganun. Also, you will learn a lot yung different crimes about crimes against person, crimes against the state. Lahat ng crimes, guys, i-discuss ngayon sa criminal law 2. So, I think, personally, criminal law 2 is very interesting and mas 
past, nilook forward ko siya ngayon compared sa Criminal Law 1. And I tell you, sa Criminal Law 1 is talagang gumapang ako dun. Tapos, I wasn't even sure kung papasa ako sa Criminal Law 1 but thank God, I was able to pass Criminal Law 1. Pero yun na nga, medyo ano siya kasi medyo broad yung kanyang coverage. And mas applicable siya generally sa lahat ng crimes. Kasi nga, yung topic sa Criminal Law 1 is general compared sa Criminal Law 2. So yun guys, and there are a lot of things pa po na pwede mong matutunan sa Criminal Law 2 which is very interesting. So, yun. So, next subject is Constitutional Law 2. So, guys, dito po sa subject na Constitutional Law 2 is just, of course, a continuation of Constitutional Law 1. So, dito po is, kasi din, yung sa kuha namin is hindi namin natapos lahat ng, ng provisions sa Philippine Constitution or 1987 Constitution. Ngayon po is continuation po siya dun sa na-stop namin na topic sa Constitutional Law 1. So, continuation lang siya ng provisions, guys. So, lahat ng provisions sa Constitution natin is iniisa-isa ng professor namin, tapos may explanation siya, nagbibigay siya ng mga jurisprudence or mga kaso for us to understand more the application of the Constitution. So again, sa Constitutional Law is continuation po siya sa Constitutional 1 na subject. And according to our professor also, we'll be talking if may time pa sa may latter part ng SEM is i-discuss niya din yung International Law, Public Law, tsaka kung may time pa International Private Law. I'm hoping na matakin namin yan para mas marami kaming malaman about sa Constitution. Yun guys, yun yung mga pwedeng expect natin sa Constitutional Law 2. Next! Yung third subject ko po is Civil Law 2 or ang book po niya ngayon is Obligations and Contracts. So guys, if I'm going to compare Civil Law 1 and Civil Law 2, magkaiba talaga yung topics guys. Because sa Civil Law 1, which is Persons and Family Relations, so it talks about persons, kinds of persons according to our law, Philippine law. So we have juridica, tsaka we have natural persons. So tapos, didiscuss dun yung family relations, yung last names, yung process ng adoption, yung pag may mga family feud o yung mga hidwaan sa family, divorce or separation, annulment, yun yung dinidiscuss sa criminal law 1 nung first sem. So, ngayon naman po is totally different na topic sa obligations and contracts because it's more on the obligations. Pag may agreement yung dalawang parties, it could be dalawang tao, o di kaya dalawang companies or company or tao. Pag may ganun guys, ano ba yung obligations ng isang party towards the other party or the obligee or the obligor or the debtor or the creditor. So, yun yung mga topics namin ngayon tungkol sa obligations. Lahat guys, it could be kung it's that a business or di kaya yung mere agreement, the meeting of minds ng dalawang tao, dalawang parties, yun yung didiscuss namin ngayon sa obligations and contracts. Technically, for prelims, and dito pa kami sa topics ng obligations. So, marami siyang topics guys, marami mga subtopics about obligations and medyo mahaba siya. And after that one, we'll be talking about contracts. Kung ano bang kailangan tandaan pag may contracts, if you're going to get into a contract, so yun yun din yung mga topics na didiscuss discuss sa obligations and contracts. And pag may time pa talaga, pag kaya pa sa SEM, i-discuss din namin daw yung about sa prescriptions. Kasi of course, contracts, we have expirations or prescriptions. Prescription is, di ba, expiration? Parang ganun. So, pati yung obligations ng dalawang parties, kung kailan magpe-prescribe, yun yung itatakil namin within Civil Law 2, or obligations and contracts. So, yun po, uh, I recommend this one, yung topic na obligations and contracts for those na mga business-minded people o for those na yung mga nagtatrabaho sa, kunwari, you're, if you're an agent or parang ganun guys, mas applicable talaga yung obligations and contracts for you. So, I hope na if, if you own a business or if you're an agent, siguro sa isang company, tapos you are outsourcing people. So, this one is for you guys and I know medyo mahaba siya na topic pero very interesting and very applicable to us. Malaman nyo na kahit pala yung ordinary na nag-promise ka sa kabigan mo, oh, pag nakapasa ka sa ano, bibigyan kita ng 10,000 pesos, that's already an obligation. So, guys, kahit maliit na usapan lang, eh, hindi nyo alam, may obligation na pala tayo dun. So, we have to know what are our obligations and kailangan natin gawin. Of course, failure to do the obligation, delivery of the, the thing or the promise or the service, eh may consequence din pala yun. So, guys, this one is very interesting and I hope na may ma-learn kayo sa obligations and contracts. Okay? So, next. Okay, guys. So, fourth ko po na subject is basic legal ethics. Ano bang pwedeng expect natin sa basic legal ethics? So, if you don't know po, sa mga bar exams or bar subjects sa bar exams, isa po dun is yung legal ethics. And to tell you, it only comprises I think, kundi ako nagkakamali, 5% sa bar yung kukunin dito. Pero guys, siya yung pinakamaliit ha, na kukunin na percentage sa bar. Pero I tell you, siya yung pinakamaliit, pero siya yung pinakadelikado for, for the lawyers pag hindi nila nasunod yung legal ethics. Why? 
because ito pong legal ethics sa subject na ito, you can expect na i-discuss po dito ano po yung mga bawal gawin ng mga lawyers tsaka hindi bawal gawin ng mga lawyers. Of course, pag may mga nagawa yung lawyers which is against po according to the legal ethics ng mga lawyers, then pwede po silang ma-reprimand or ma-suspend or worse po is pwede silang ma-disbar. So see, napaka-importante po ng subject na legal ethics. So malaman po natin dito kung anong, of course, yung lawyer's oath, tapos yung mga duties and responsibilities ng mga lawyers. So dito po, dinidiscuss. So right now, we are discussing the different canons. Tapos lahat po na bawal na gawin ng mga lawyers. So yes, heads up lang po. Bawal po yung mga lawyers na mag-advertise ng kalang services. Bawal po yung lawyers daw according to our legal ethics na subject. Ay hindi, bawal yung magtaas ng price or ng rate sa services. Ang mas bawal guys is yung lawyers nagpapababa ng rate para mas maraming client. So bawal yun guys. So if you know someone, then that's bawal. Okay? Bawal din po na naghanap, nagsusolicit ka po ng services. Bawal na, na parang nagbabar ka ng mga tao. Parang, uy, si ano? Uy, dito ka, dito ka sa amin. Kasi mas mura sa amin. Bawal po yun, guys. So, there are a lot of things sa po na kaya na pwede nyo pong matutunan about sa mga do's and don'ts sa duties and responsibilities ng lawyers under po ng basic legal ethics. So, this one po is, uh, three units lang siya for, for our school, pero malaking impact niya sa mga future na lawyers. So yun po, personally po, pag ito na yung subject namin, hindi, hindi talaga ako nabobore. Why? Because we are talking about the actual duty of the lawyer. Po, not lang po towards the client or towards the case, but more on the actuations po ng mga lawyers. And to tell you po, so far, because I learned na something about this one, sa legal ethics, eh medyo natatakot na ako maggala-gala o di kaya magsalita ng kahit ano. Kasi anything po that will create immoral na image sa lawyer, di kaya sa mga law students, hindi po siya maganda for of course for the image of the lawyers so bawal po yun and if you don't know po uh, pag may kaso po so regarding moral turpitude so bawal din po pala na makapag take ng oath yung mga nakapasa sa bar so yun napakadami po na mga pwede matutunan sa legal ethics which I hope you will learn a lot because this one is interesting so far ha a very interesting na subject and very applicable po sa profession po ng mga lawyers so yun po next subject Next subject po, pang limang subject ko po is the ADR or the Alternative Dispute Resolution. This subject talks about alternative na mga pwedeng gawin sa lower, pinaka-lower na level para po ma-prevent po yung mga kaso na dumating sa courts. Further pa is ma ma makarating sa Supreme Court. So dito na subject po guys is i-discuss kung ano pa mga procedures na kailangan gawin para po uh, as much as possible ma-prevent nga pong makarating yung mga kaso o mga dispute sa higher na courts. Because po, uh, if you don't know, napakarami pong kaso ngayon na pending pa o hindi pa nabibigyan ng mga final judgment ng court because nga po, napakarami ng kaso ngayon sa mga courts. So as much as possible, pag pwede pa pong i-resolve sa may lower na lower level, mas lower pa po sa mga first instance sa mga courts, for example, sa, sa mga MTC po, mas lower pa dyan is of course sa barangay level, kung kaya pa po na i-resolve, dun pa lang sa level na yun, i-resolve na para hindi na po madagdagan ng mas maraming kaso sa courts. So yun po yung pinaka dinidiscuss ngayon sa ADR or the Alternative Dispute Resolution. Dinidiscuss kung saan ba kailangan unang i-file, sa barangay captain ba, tapos ilang days yung kailangan na ma-resolve lahat, tapos pag hindi talaga ma-resolve, anong mangyayari sa mga parties na involved po sa doon sa dispute na yun. So guys, so far, maganda din siya because uh, I learned a lot so far ha, sa meetings namin about ADR na kailangan palang i-resolve, kung pwede i-resolve yung problema sa lower level, then kailangan talaga i-resolve. So yun guys, I hope to learn more about the dispute resolutions alternative dispute resolutions in the following meetings. So, yun po sa ADR. So, my last subject po for this sem is the legal techniques and logic. So, this is my first time to have this subject because last sem wala kaming ganitong subject. Yes, question. Ano nga ba pong pwedeng matutunan sa legal technique and logic? So, guys, dito na subject na to is matututunan nyo po kung paano gumawa ng argument. Isang magandang argument. Na question, ano, ano nga ba po yung argument? So, guys, if nakapanood na kayo ng mga movies, hindi kayo mga telesensya, serye sa, sa TV na may mga trial or nasa yung setting is nasa court na may, may discussion o may, may isang 
trial sa court. So, ganun. So, guys, yung mga sinasabi ng mga lawyers doon sa court, those are arguments. So, dito sa subject na to na legal technique and logic, tinuturoan kami kung paano gumawa na isang magandang argument. Remember, guys, a good lawyer presents a good argument. So, dapat, guys, yung sabi sa amin, dapat yung argument na gagawin namin o i-represent namin as a lawyer is dapat yung argument na yun is makapag-persuade ng mga tao. For example, gawin natin, gawa tayo example ng isang kaso wherein may isang, of course, accused or alleged na suspect tsaka yung victim. For example, so if you are able to present a good argument, then the people will think or people will be influenced to think like, oh nga ano, so baka nga siya yung gumawa. O di kaya, on the other party, pwede yung mga tao makaisip na, oh nga, baka siya nga yung talaga. Parang ganun ba? O di kaya, oh nga, parang wala talaga siya kasalanan eh. Parang ganun. Because, you as the lawyer, gumawa ka ng magandang argument. So, you are able to persuade, to change their minds, to change their views towards the case. So, yun yung mga arguments guys, sinasabi sa subject na ito. So, so far, mangganda yung tinuturo sa amin. Tapos, tinuturo na kami kung paano construct ng arguments based on the facts given by, of course, yung mga parties, so di kaya yung mga witnesses, so yung gagawan mo siya ng arguments. So far nga, interesting yung mga discussions namin sa class. And I'm hoping to learn a lot pa talaga because this is the portion kasi kung saan magagamit yung pagka magaling mo sa English, dun sa, nung sa elementary o di kaya sa high school, di kaya sa college. So, think of this subject as parang English siya na subject kung saan tinuturuan kayo mag-construct ng isang magandang paragraph. So, parang ganun. So, ito yung subject na yon para ito yung magiging defense mo or parang sa debate kung anong magiging mabibigay mo na, na information, parang ganun. So, yun guys. So, that is the thing that you're going to learn dito po sa legal, technique, and logic. So, yun. So, so far guys, yun lang po yung subjects ko for this time. I have six. I mentioned six. I have criminal law, civil law 2, constitutional law 2, ADR, legal ethics, and legal techniques and logic. So, yun. So, I hope you learned something today na may natutunan kayo and I hope na alam nyo na po kung anong mga i-expect nyo pag dumating na kayo sa second sem sa first year. Guys, if you find this one interesting, please don't forget to leave this one a thumbs up or kaya you can share this video to your friends who are interested also to proceed to law school. And if you have questions also regarding these topics or regarding the topics that we had today, so please leave a comment below so I can read those and siguro I can reply to those po sa baba. Guys, if you have other suggestions po for my next content sa videos, please let me know para po magawan ko po siya ng content tsaka magawan ko po siya ng may input ng mga ideas kung ano po pwede natin i-discuss doon. So, yun guys. And yes, uh, I'm encouraging everyone to follow me po sa my other social media accounts like Instagram, Twitter, sa other YouTube na account I also have my email address if you want to send me an email and guys sa Facebook I have a page there named Law Pressure guys please follow my page also so yun lang guys if you're new to this channel please be part of the family by clicking the subscribe button and click the notification po para ma-update po kayo sa mga bagong uploads ko po so yun lang guys thank you for today and I will see you in my next video